Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 2. This is one that jumps a little bit over the place, but it really kind of sticks to, like, the actual premise of what's going on here. So there is a lot more storytelling than usual. Um, I honestly cannot, re cannot remember if we have, like, an actual, like, thumbnail or anything as of yet but for those that are not aware this is actually more of like the traditional nightmare on christmas kind of movie setting right like the original one kind of stuck with halloween town and everything going on there this one kind of delves deeper into the actual like movie elements from what i remember of this movie it, it has been a really 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 long time since i've seen this movie so i cannot confirm or deny if that is actually far from the truth or not but from what i remember this premise is a little bit more on part with the movie and i do like this world in particular because it does it actually gives our character like some aesthetic to the world which is why i don't really like as much as i hate atlantica i do like that it like completely shifts how our characters look and we try to fit in with the environment which is it's cool it only happens in a couple worlds and this is one of them but uh you know it it's just sort of cool from that uh from that side of things just the way that the game handles that i don't know And here we're just, we're doing a little bit of adventure and just looking around, seeing what we could find. And as a side note for all those, if you're developing in, um, yeah, this is going to be like very bizarre, but this is my PSA to like people out there who are using some of the developing software that I'm using. If you are using Wondershare Filmora at all, you are better off to buy your games on console and then stream them versus doing a PC screen because it cannot capture high enough output to match what you'd be streaming versus an HDMI cable. Um, I, I guess that's very dependent on what you're putting out there, but I have like an HD 60 Elgato, I don't know, above and beyond what this channel needs is what I'm trying to share. And there's Jack for the first time. But, uh, yeah, with that being said, if you're using that software, um, when you stream off your PC screen, everything comes out with a little bit lower resolution, which is why my Call of Duty episode came out to be batshit garbage. So if you're using that software, I would highly recommend buy it on a console, whatever game you're going to play, and stream it from there. And then if you, uh, if you sincerely want to play the game, play it on your PC in your off time, but... That's my PSA, because it has bit me on a handful of episodes here, and uh, I just now discovered it. Here we go. This year, Halloween's Town. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Halloween Town. They really did a lot to, like, build out this world in comparison to, like, what they have done in the past. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised. Like I said, this world ends up being one of my favorites in this game. But, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that, but. There we are, there's the actual title screen for Halloween Town. And this episode is a little bit on the longer side. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of the episodes coming out are going to be on that level. Solely just because, I mean, there's two things, if I'm going to be honest. Number one, we really need to get through these games. Um, it's probably going to take us about a month longer than I expected, which is not good news. But we'll work our way through it. And then number two, I've actually switched to so like... Um, when I record the Pokemon games because they're emulated on my PC and everything like that, I need to sit down with the keyboard and do them here at the table where I normally do my voice recordings and things like that. But 
as far as Xbox goes, because the controller is wireless and I can do it wherever, I actually spend a lot of time on my uh, on my uh, indoor bike. Like I'll just sit down and pump out like 14 miles while I'm doing these episodes, and that's exactly what I did with this episode here. Um, I sat down, I biked, quote unquote, 14 point like two miles or something like that, and just ripped out this whole world in one setting. I did cut some of it out there just to get rid of some of the nuances and try to shorten this up as much as humanly possible, but I think it's better to have one 40-ish minute episode than it is to have two 30 minute episodes. And just have like a lot of filler killing the heartless kind of stuff in there, so. I don't know, hopefully you guys view that content and you say, hey Average Joe, I agree with that, but it does appear that this episode or this series in general is getting a little bit less love than the overall Pokemon series is getting. So, um, you know, maybe not as much feedback. That's okay. Um, for me, this is really, it's a personal game. So I'm going to give it as much attention as I honestly want to. And uh, if you don't agree, I really don't care. One of my favorite games of all time, I'm going to give it more attention than other games. It's just how it's going to go. You know, the Pokemon stuff is still going to come out on time, as expected, but this is, uh, this is a game that I, I really cherish, so I'm going to spend a lot of time on it. And, of course, we do have our July 4th episode that's going to be coming out that's going to be drastically different from everything else that's coming out. I still have no fucking idea what we're going to do. Honestly, um... It might come down to, like, my favorite jokes in, like, the Team America movie or something like that. Just something fucking stupid, but we'll see as we get there. You know, it's all part of it. We will see. a quick save here we want to save in each world of course we do let's get out there and I did actually cut out like a little bit of exploration in that room just like looking for stuff but you know it is what it is Here we go. I just, I wanted to include this little bit here. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit spacey here. I wanted to include this little bit here because there is a lot in this square that has changed. So like things in the, oh, things in the actual environment will completely fuck with you. As you can see there, like you hit the fountain, all of a sudden it starts spewing where you were standing. The guillotine will cut. Um, some of the grates over here will lift and things like that. I did want to leave this little element because they did make it like that gate opens widely and hits you full speed. There's just a lot going on here. Of course, I'm going around and getting all the hidden gems and things like that, but there's a lot going on here that could damage you, and it is worth noting here because it's easy enough to happen. It's all triggered by where you are in the map. It is pretty cool and it makes sense for a place like this. I really like it, if I'm gonna be 100% honest. But uh, I, I just wanted to showcase some of that. There you can see the guillotine going down, killing a heartless. Um, just some cool stuff. Like the environment really responds to where you are. And that's the sort of thing in like Kingdom Hearts 2 that like I really love. Like it's not just like you're in this world and these things are going on. It's like no, everything responds around you, and it's so cool that it does that. Like it's so different than what it was in Kingdom Hearts One. It's clear the developers took time to like really pour their hearts into this game, and I've always loved that from this game. It's very evident when you play it that it's like that was the focus. Is like build on the worlds have the stories of the movies reflect
to the characters and then work with that. And they did a phenomenal job. You know, there's really nothing else you could say. It's awesome. It, awesome. Like, definitively. I don't think much more could have been done to this game that would have made it, like, above and beyond better than what it is. I think it's a terrific game. Here we go. We got Maleficent back, obviously controlling the little kids. I don't know their names because, like I said, I've watched this movie as a kid, but it wasn't my favorite Halloween movie by any means. I really want to go back and give it a watch. Maybe that's what we'll do in one of the October episodes, but I feel like when I was watching it, I just didn't... I'm not a big, like, musical person, I would say. I, I could sit down and watch it, but I've never been... I've never saw, like, a musical where I was like, oh my god, this is so much better than a movie or anything like that, so... And, and yeah, these films really heavily rely upon the music, and, and to be honest, yeah, this is a little bit ranty here, but typically in, like, television shows, I would say, when they start incorporating more music and things like that into, like, gags and punchlines, I lose interest so fast. I know I've said it in an episode before because I can recall saying it, but um, it's the one thing I would give, like, South Park has done it in recent years, but Family Guy really started it when they did, like, the whole Mr. Booze because Peter was an alcoholic and went to AA. Family Guy really started that trend, and uh, it's a terrible trend. It, it's just, it's stupid. It's really bad. It's garbage. And, um, yeah, it's, it's not something I can even, like, tolerate in a show. Like, if the way that, like, a show ends is, like, a five-minute music segment, I'm out. I'm done. Can't do it. Lost all my interest. It's over. Boy voyage. I, I don't give two shits. I don't know, maybe that's just how I am as a person, because you can make some really good songs and incorporate them into videos, and I, that's, I hate to compare the two once again, because this video has no relevance to it whatsoever, but it's an Average Joe episode, so what the hell are we even talking about anyways? My girl ain't no hobbit in the South Park series was hilarious. And even the whole South Park episode about Mormons, really funny stuff. But it was being a musical to drive this story forward, which is why I feel like this particular movie here, The Nightmare Before Christmas, might actually work for myself because it is to drive the story forward. But I just, yeah, like I said, it's one of those things I can't focus like too much on music. Otherwise, I get like just like, well, I, I start comparing it to other music and not in the realm that it deserves to be in. And I start just being like, well, yeah, this music sucks. It's not as good as other music. So. And I'm sorry if there's some chomper noises in the background. I did give the dog some treats tonight. We skipped out on dinner because of course we did. Why would we not skip out on dinner when I have to do a large amount of voice recordings and get sloppy on some of these soda pops why would we not skip out There we go. We are actually looking at like the Christmas town now, which is really cool. Like we have two character changes here, all within a period of a couple minutes, and they both look very distinct and different. And it looks cool, and it's it's fucking awesome. What else can I say? Everybody looks splendid. Everybody just looks great.
There we go. We defeated all the Heartless. That's all we need to do there. Here we go, everybody's stocking up, getting ready to go. Sorry man, this has been a really spotty episode. Jesus, what are we doing on the voice recording average show? What are we doing? There we go. We actually ran into Santa himself. Which would, uh, if I met Santa Claus, I would probably drop a drawer in my pants. I don't know. I'd be losing it. Santa freaking Claus. In the house. Uh, Sora's not a good boy. Because he told everybody he didn't believe in Santa. Long time ago. Sora, you punk. It happens. And Donald and Goofy. I bet you these guys are good boys. They are on the list. Look at Donald being an Olaf before Olaf even existed. Like years before he existed. But there's something going on in the workshop. Oh boy. What could be going on? Santa's going to check it out. It's like this time. He's like, oh, it's a long story. Yeah, Jack, because you have come over here and fucked it up before. Huh? What do you got to say, Jack? Opening up some chests. There we go. We have a cup because I was doing all the good stuff in there. Of course. Like I said, if you want a 100% playthrough, I'm sure you can find it out there, but we're just trying to get through this, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we're trying to do. I don't like to cut my voice recording short, and I've only got about 30 minutes of momentum in me at a time. So, we're trying our best when we do this. But there we go. The three little kiddos did what they could for Maleficent. Now they're breaking through the window. What are they? Lock, Shock, and Barrel? Is that their name? Lock, Shock, and Barrel! Average Joe on the money! Let's get this guy a chocolate chip cookie and a medal. I got that one. Usually I'm not good with names. I forget the names of fucking relatives that I have sometimes. Who knows? It happens. What are you going to do? There we go. Santa's throwing a fit. Jack Skellington tried to help, but I mean, he's Jack Skellington. How can you trust a guy like that? And Sora's just going on about stuff. Because he's Sora. Why not? Look at all these little footprints. We could follow them back to where they went. Obviously, they went back to Halloween Town. Yeah, so let's cut there. And let's fight some Heartless. Doodly doo doo doo. Tie my shoes. Make my way downtown. Killing Heartless, dressed up as a Halloween guy. That's what we're doing. And if you hear a dog drinking water, guess what? It's what you thought it was. It's a dog drinking goddamn water. What else would it be? Here we go. Let's go into the graveyard. And I kept this area in here because there is some plot significance. Obviously we have Maleficent here, who has arisen back from the dead. 
How you ask? I'm sure earlier episodes allude to it, but at this point, I have no idea. We defeat that witch as a dragon. And I actually said witch with W there. Just to clarify. Just to clarify! But, um, yeah, it's... How did it happen? I clarify myself on the witch versus using the other word, but it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's a load of garbage. It gets explained in later games, but it's annoying. It's it's really stupid. It's really annoying. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I don't like it. I don't like Maleficent returning after we defeated her as a bad guy. I do like what she can bring to the table in terms of uh, creating new bad guys and things like that, but it's kind of stupid. And I got rid of like all of our heartless battles there. I just want to keep the plot moving at this point in time, honestly, if I'm going to be 100% serious. Um, we just need to keep going through the story because that's important. That is the important part of all this stuff. Everything going on, the story is the most important element of it. There we go, we're fighting Oogie Boogie. Get down, Oogie Boogie Oogie. That's what you gotta do. There we go. Here we are. The Heartless is emerging. We're showing up to the burial grounds, of course. I, I don't know what else to call them. There we go. We got the little guys. They're trapped in this Heartless. Let's beat the shit out of this Heartless. This is the last soda pop of this episode. I don't care where we finish it off. Once the soda pop's done, I'm done. But I believe I just proceeded to beat the shit out of this thing. <laughs> if I recall correctly. Um, this thing does not give me much of feedback to really deal with. Like, there's nothing strong that comes out of this. So, it's not that bad. Yeah, it just sort of is what it is. Yeah. Hey, uh, I am grinding away at the health of this thing. Can't hit it all the way up there, but once it comes back down, it's doing almost zero damage to me. I, I actually think absolutely zero damage to me. And it may just be like how I'm looking out right now, because I'm sure it does damage to me later, but I'm just grinding away, smacking the A button and the jump button as many times as I humanly can. And that's that's about all I'm doing. It's a... It's a terrific boss. Especially because most of his attacks happen to enemies in the air, which I am not frequently. Besides basic jumping. Okay, here's... You actually got a good attack. Okay. Because I'm fixated on it. I'm not going to be fixated on the ball, so I'm never actually going to do the amount of damage that I want to do here, which is going to be a problem. So let's smack it around. We have to find a good way to get around that, because as you can see with my health bar right now, it actually did do a good chunk of damage doing what it did. But I mean, we've almost got it. It's over half. 
at this point. Yeah, there's not a, a lot of life left in this thing. And all of its other moves are doing legitimately almost nothing. And I just continue to smack it around. It's This boss is like one of the bigger disappointments in this game, if I'm going to be honest. It's not hard at all. Anytime it even gets close to me, that's the only move it has that is effective against me. And you didn't see it off screen, but I said all of my teammates to heal me more frequently than any other move that they use. So it's not... There's nothing wrong with this battle. I, I don't even think I used Cure. So there we go. We finish off the boss. It was kind of a chump. Really didn't care about it all the way through. It's just was what it was. You know, there we go. Beat the Heartless. The battle's over. And of course, we get more story elements. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we, folks? Now, why we get them? is because this game needs to be a full-length game. I'm just kidding, honestly. It's because I wanted to cram an hour of content into 40-some minutes. And apparently I don't have the mental capacity to do that length. Just because I'm tired. <laughs> But here we go. Let the story play out. Story doodly doo doo doo. There's a lot of story stuff going on. It's a story. There's a uh, big stuff going on. Everybody's doing stuff. And uh, if we don't abide by the story, Disney will sue us. So we need to continue to do that. Oh my goodness, and the villains over here. What are the chances? Holy shit. It's just happening like this. We have to see. Oh my fat cock. What are we gonna do? What are we going to do? Well, continue to play through it because they apparently think they're invulnerable, even though I've beaten both of them before. And saved the goddamn world. Like. How is it even a possibility in their mind that they're going to win at this point in time? It is so goddamn stupid. But anyways, let's go to the final battle here in Santa's Village. Um, it's some classic boogie-oogie bullshit. Where we have to play a game with him in order to win. I honestly... Want, yeah, once this beer is finished, I'm fucking done. It, it's stupid. I like this world a lot, but... It's also a freaking kick in the balls. It's dumb. I hate these battles with Oogie Boogie. They're so fucking stupid. And this is like, it's not even the first time that he's done it. It's multiple times. I do like the little bit of back and forth here between Oogie Boogie, and I actually really like the battle overall with Sora and Oogie Boogie playing through it. But doing a voiceover on it, it's, it's fucking stupid. It's dumb. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is going to be it for this episode. I think uh, if you like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff is greatly motivational. And myself making videos just like this now and in the near future. Um, yeah, you can watch it through the rest of this episode without my voice play over it. Um, 
yeah, not a whole lot happens. We defeat Oogie Boogie and obviously clear the world and seal the keyhole and things like that. It's at this point in the game, it's kind of annoying. I'm going to be honest. But until next time, folks, we'll see you all here on the next episode. And if you like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, enjoy the, the last 10 or so minutes without my voice being on top of it. You know, maybe we'll get some peaceful res resolution to the final boss battle. But until next time, guys, everybody take it easy. And we'll see you all here on the next one. Peace out. <laughs> you and I have a score to settle, Jack. Same goes for your little side chicks. What are you planning to do with Sandy Claus? Who? Sandy Claus? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and why is this roly-poly red guy here? Time to go, Grandpa! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Santa Claus! <laughs> Why, you...
just hit. That's right, away you go! All right, Christmas is safe again. Perfect. I'd better get down to business. <laughs> yup, you ought to stick to Halloween and spooky stuff. Dad. Wonderful! Why, I love it! Thank you, Sally. Jack, do you really have to do this? But I make a splendid Sandy Claus. Listen here, Jack Skellington. You saved me in Christmas as well, and for that I'm very grateful. But please promise you won't cause any more trouble. And about that suit. Don't even think about taking over from me again. I just thought you could use a little help this year, Mr. Claus. You must be exhausted from all the preparations. And I wouldn't mind a second chance to get this Christmas thing right. <sighs> yes, being Santa Claus can be tiring. But let me tell you something, Jack. Seeing the happy faces of little children when they discover the presents I've brought them makes it all worthwhile, year after year after year. And you, Jack, you love to make them gasp and see them shiver with fright. What if someone tried to take all of that away from you? We both have very important jobs to do, Jack. Mine is to take care of Christmas, and yours is to take care of Halloween. So we each have to do the very best we can. After all, you're the face of Halloween, Mr. Jack Skellington. The Pumpkin King, the Knight of Nightmares. And even though you're fascinated with Christmas, Jack, Halloween is your true specialty. Don't you see? Children rely on both of us to do our jobs. Halloween needs your attention, and I know Christmas needs mine, urgently. You're right. I am the Master of Terror. And if Halloween has become too routine, all I have to do is think of something new that'll really make them scream! Jack! Oh, Jack! I've been looking for you everywhere! We must go over the plans for next Halloween. I can't do a thing without your approval. So true. Good luck, Jack Skellington. Well, there he goes. Yes, and I've got lots of names to check and preparations to finish. Ooh. Oh! Jack, this is no time for joking. What's this? Perhaps a bit too festive for our Halloween needs.
We better get going. Before you do, Sora, I believe there's a friend of yours who, if I recall correctly, was the one who told you there's no such thing as Santa Claus? Oh, yeah. He did say that. Be sure to give him my very best wishes. I will, but... Do you know where I can find Riku? No, but don't give up. Remember, if you believe in Riku, you will find him. Just as you found me. Right. 